Hello everyone, my name is Mariam Mokta. A 17-year-old victim of statutory rape in Kemaman, Trenganu, is going through a harrowing ordeal. Instead of being given support and specialist help for her trauma, she is being raped twice over. First, by her rapist and a second time by the system. This victim ought to be placed under specialist care, but she faces a further devastating impact on her mental health with a long wait for her trial. It is not just the teenager who suffers, but also her family because the court placed her in a welfare home while awaiting trial and even denied her, her mother, her own mother, access to her daughter. The teenager, the victim, was raped when she was a minor. She is also a victim of sexual exploitation by her then 22-year-old boyfriend. How many other young girls in Malaysia face the same vulnerabilities? If that was not bad enough, we do not know if her rapist boyfriend has been caught. It is two years since the police investigation started. Has the rapist escaped to a neighbouring state or country? Is he protected by close family and friends? How serious is the police in finding the rapist who could put other girls at risk? In 2022, two years ago, the 15-year-old victim of rape was denied bail for stabbing her newborn baby to death with a sharp object on the 8th of February in her own home at Felkra Sri Bandi in Chukai in Kamaman. She was held in remand for seven days as part of the police investigation and I think on 15th February, the magistrate's court in Kamaman charged her with murder. The charge was under Section 302 of the Penal Code and if convicted, she would then face the death penalty. She was denied bail by the magistrate, Tanku Eliana Kamaruzaman, because Malaysian law stipulates that Section 302 is a non-bailable offence and bail could only be granted at the discretion of the court. The teenage rape victim's legal team then submitted the application for bail with the exceptions available under Section 388 of the Criminal Procedure Code, provided the person charged is either sick, a minor or a female. The Court of Appeal allowed her to be released on bail two months later. This was in May 2022. After two years, on the 13th of February 2024, the girl, who is now 17 years old, pleaded guilty to the charge of infanticide of her newborn son. Pleading guilty meant that she escaped the death sentence under a previous murder charge against her. The charge of infanticide means that, if convicted, she could be jailed for a maximum of 20 years and be fined. She was also allowed bail pending sentencing to be held on the 9th of May this year. Meanwhile, a behaviour report or uh, Lapuran Akhla will be prepared for sentencing. There are many disturbing points about this young girl's story. Her future was destroyed when she was raped. And now she is being punished in a high-profile public interest case in the courts. After a brief period in the hospital for psychiatric evaluation, she was then transferred to a welfare home where her own mother was denied access to her. She was only 14, 14 yeah, when she was raped by the boyfriend who was 10 years older than her. She then gave birth to 
the baby at 15. Now, did she not know she was being sexually exploited by her boyfriend? Did the boyfriend rape her even though she said no? Did he rape her because she did not know that being impregnated would lead to a pregnancy? Perhaps the Ministry of Education should resume sex education lessons in schools to educate, to inform and to protect young girls and boys from sexual predators. Was the victim afraid of telling her parents about what had happened because of the social stigma, the isolation and the humiliation involved? As our young children currently do not receive sex education in schools, perhaps the rape victim did not know she could become pregnant because no one had told her a child is conceived after having sex. Had she blanked out all memory of her rape and giving birth had rekindled the trauma, the violation of her body and her feelings of hate for the rapist? Could all these have triggered the stabbing incident? To deny the victim access to her own mother is very cruel. Only her own family members know her best. The welfare home is no substitute for her mother's love or for her family's support. When will ministers take the time and trouble to understand the meaning of statutory rape? Are they aware, are the ministers aware of the mental and physical trauma suffered by the victim and her family? Section 375 G of the Penal Code states that sex with a person who is under 16 with or without her consent is considered statutory rape. The victim of rape who brings up her child probably knows that without education or skills, she is condemned to a bleak future. This rape also demonstrates how sex education is vital to protect young girls and boys. And contrary to the opinions of some people, sex education is not about how to have free sex. Sex education discusses the dangers of having sex at an early age, the consequences of having unprotected sex, how to say no and how to avoid peer pressure, and most important of all, the importance of stable loving relationships. This teenager is a victim and needs support, not jail time. Thank you for listening. Speak to you soon. If you like my videos, please press like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Please also visit my Patreon channel if you wish to sponsor me. Thank you.